In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create your own class libraries. The objectives for this lesson are to learn what is a class library, the most common types of class libraries that you're going to probably create, we'll do an explanation of the different class library types, and we will create a common class library. What is a class library? Well, it's one or more related classes within an assembly or a DLL. You'll find that Sometimes people call a class library a component, and they can be consumed by other assemblies and executables. That makes these class libraries very reusable, maintainable, and you'll find redistribution of these class libraries much easier to do. So what kind of class libraries will you typically create? Well, I like to break my class libraries up into a common, an MVC common, a Web API common, a WPF common, and a WinForms common. So depending on the kind of application I'm building, I would use one or many of these different assemblies. I also always like to say, well, I'm working within the finance industry. So in that particular company, I probably have a set of common tables that I want to model to. So I would create a company data layer and a company entity layer and a company view model layer. So then as I'm building my applications, I'll also have DLLs just for that application, an application data layer, an entity layer, and a view model layer to go after those tables that are kind of unique to that application. But the great thing is that application can also use all of the ones below the line there, can take advantage of the company data layer and the company entity layer, and if it's a web API app, I might be using common and the web API common. Then maybe I build another application. I would also break it out into its separate components, but it also can use the various layers down here. And maybe that one is a WPF application, so it might take advantage of common and the WPF common. So the more you can break things up, the easier it is to reuse these classes and you now have just code in one place to do one thing. So let's talk about what each one of those boxes is. So the common libraries, classes that can be used by any type of application. There's no UI specific classes in here at all. It's things to work with strings or dates or math operations or whatever is just pure algorithms, things like that that you might use in any type of application. Then I might have an MVC common library. These are classes that can be used in any type of MVC application. Maybe you have some custom action filters or things like that that you want to do. Or maybe you've got a web API common. These are, these are classes that are used in any web API application. And WPF common, classes used in any WPF application. We'd have a WinForms common. If you're still doing WinForms applications, these would be classes used in any Windows form application. So you can kind of see where I'm going here, right? You're breaking things down into specific classes that work on a specific technology or are generic and can be used across any of these types of applications. Then we get into your company specific DLLs. The data layer would be data classes used to manipulate the common tables that you use from multiple applications within your company. The entity layer would be entity classes to model those common tables within your company. And the view model layer would be view models used for common business rules within your company. And it calls the data layer to perform CRUD operations. And it controls the UI layer based on the business rules and the data. Now, as we get to the application layer, each application is a specific type of application. And this exe or DLL would contain the UI and other application specific classes. But it's also going to have its own data layer, which are the data classes used to manipulate specific tables for this application. The entity layer, which are the entity classes to model specific tables for this application and its own view model layer as well, which are the specific business rules for this application. It calls the data layer to perform CRUD operations, and it controls the UI layer for this specific application based on those business rules and data. But remember, 
Each of these application DLLs or libraries can also call the other libraries for the, from the common all the way to your company data layer, company entity layer, etc. So what are the advantages of building class libraries? Well, it allows us to categorize classes into different DLLs, helps different developers work on each library separately. We can then reuse these libraries in different applications, and that's probably the biggest benefit you're going to get. So we would do things in MVC, Windows Forms, WPF, Web APIs, etc. We can reuse libraries in any one of these. And also, it helps us easily test each library on its own. Now, we're not going to build every single one of those DLLs, but let's take a look at one you might use most often, and that's the common class library. What are the kind of things you're going to want to put into this library? Well, you're going to probably have some base classes, right? So these will be base classes that you can inherit from, and that'd be like a view model, a repository, an entity, various things you'll probably use as base classes. That belongs in your common class library. Then you might have some sort of message broker and validation type classes. You might have some data annotation attributes that you've created. Maybe you have some classes that help you work with JSON or XML. You might have some classes to help you work with file IO. Remember the file system helper we developed earlier in this course. Maybe you also have one to help you work with configuration settings. Maybe you need some cryptography or other types of classes, things that are very generic, that are really can be used from any UI, depending on what kind of technology you're using. And that's the important thing here is keep the technology, the front end technology, out of this common class library. This should be pure classes, which is properties and generic methods. Let's take a look at building a common library. We did this once earlier in the class where we right mouse click on the solution and we add a new project and you locate the class library. And again, make sure that you're targeting the one for .NET or .NET standard and then click next. Provide your name. So in this case, common.library and you should choose whatever framework you are targeting and we create that. Now, as I kind of mentioned before, let's go ahead and delete that class one. We don't really need that. And then you start adding folders and classes and things that you're gonna put inside of here. So for example, I might have a view model base class that has some things in it. I got some properties here that I've used in the past. I might also create another class, entity base. And inside of here, I might create some properties like last updated by. Maybe another one, which would be a date time last updated. So this would be some examples of things that I might build in an entity base class. Now we've see the little squiggly, that's a string, if you remember. And it's totally up to you, but I like going in and turning off that nullable flag. I like to disable that so I don't get these warnings. I know that I don't need to initialize those because null is a perfectly acceptable value for me for the last updated by. Other things we might do, we might have a email settings. And I've got some public properties in, in here that I use just for handling emails, the SMTP server, the SMTP port, the from name, the from email, the to email, the subject. I have some helper classes. I have a date helper that helps me calculate the month start, helps me calculate the month end, helps me calculate the quarter start or a quarter end, year start, year end, get what quarter we're in. So these are all just examples, but as you can see, very simple classes. There's no UI, there's nothing referencing MVC, there's nothing, nothing referencing WPF. I have a phone helper, that's the one that we created earlier. 
I might have some interfaces in here, like I have an interface for handling repository classes. Repository would be things to go access data. I have a validation message class. It has a property name and a message that I want to report back if the user puts in some invalid data. And maybe I even throw a validation exception. So I have a custom exception here. So this is an example of just some of the things that you might find in a common library. Then from wherever you wish to use these, you simply add a reference to it. Now I'm setting a project reference because it's here within this solution, but a lot of times you don't want to include these. You'll have a set of DLLs, your users or your developers would get them out of your repository, your source code control repository, and they might then browse to them somewhere and find them. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this in one, this one in for now. So by doing this then, I can now access within my program.cs, I can use the date helper class, for instance, right? And I can say, okay, take the date time right now and get what quarter that I'm in. Or I can use my phone helper class. And remember, we saw this example earlier. So now by doing a using on common.library, after I have set a reference to that common.library DLL, I now have full access to all of these classes. So that was an example of a common library. Like I said, we're not going to build all the rest of these libraries that I talked about, but let's take a look at some of the things that you might put within them. So in an MVC class library, I might have base classes for a controller and for a view model. And that view model base class would probably inherit from the one in my common library and then add on things that are specific for MVC. I might have a caching class, a security class, an exception handling class, a session handling class, a view state handling class, and many, many others. Then if I was building a WPF application, I might want to have a WPF class library of reusable classes like base classes for window, for a view model again. I might have caching, I might have security, I might have exception handling, I might have animation, I might have converters. So some of these will be similar names, similar type things, but they do it differently depending on whether we're in MVC versus whether we're in WPF. I mean, security in WPF is much different from security in MVC. But these are the kinds of things that you will create inside of each of these very UI-specific types of class libraries. In this lesson, we learned why class libraries are important. We learned about the most common types of class libraries that you're going to create, and then we created a common class library. Well, we have covered quite a lot inside of this course. You should now have a very good foundation for programming object-oriented. You've learned how to create properties and methods. You understand how to implement inheritance. You know how to limit the scope of data. You've learned to raise and consume events. You understand now that generics can save you a lot of time and code, and class libraries really help you organize your classes. So where do you go from here? Well, you're probably going to maybe jump into learning web programming, for instance, MVC, Razor Pages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Or maybe you're going to learn web API programming and learn about web API controllers or the minimal web API. Maybe you want to do some desktop programming with WPF, or maybe do some universal Windows platform development, or even mobile development using .NET MAUI. These are all things that you can now start taking advantage of now that you've learned the basics of object-oriented programming.